Welcome back to the solutions manual. In this video, we will solve the problem F3-7 from Hansing Hibbeler Engineering Statics to Addition. According to this problem, we have to determine the magnitude of forces F1, F2, F3 so that the particle is held in equilibrium. So to solve this problem, first of all we will express each force in terms of Cartesian vector form. So for F1, F1 has two components, one along the y-axis and one along the positive z-axis. Let us call this angle right here as theta. Since we have been provided with the similar triangle, which is 3, 4, 5 triangle, so for theta, we have tan theta is equals to 3 upon 4. So from here, theta is equals to 36.87 degrees. So now, F1 could be written as 0i because it has no component in the x-axis plus F1 cos 36.87j plus F1 sin 36.87k. Now, for F2, F2 has only one component which is directed in the negative sense of the positive x-axis. So it is negative F2i plus 0j plus 0k. Now for F3, Now F3 has a component which is directed along the plane containing x and y axes, this component basically. If we consider this angle right here as alpha, then again because we have been provided with the similar triangle, so for alpha. tan alpha is equals to 4 upon 3 so from here alpha is equals to 53.13 degrees so this component right here could be written as f3 cos 53.13 degrees <coughs> Now this force component of F3 force could further be resolved along the x and y axis. So we have one component along the x axis and one along the y axis. If we consider this angle right here as beta, so this angle right here is beta, we could find this angle beta by considering the similar triangle which is 3, 4, 5 triangle. So for beta, tan beta is equal to 4 upon 3. So beta is equals to 53.13 degrees. So for F3, we have the x component which is F3 cos 53.13 degrees into cos 53.13 degrees i plus the y component which is directed in the negative sense of the positive y axis because it is directed 
in this direction. So it is negative, negatively directed. That would be negative F3 cos 53.13 degrees into sine 53.13 degrees J and then we have the Z component which looks something like this this is our Z component so it is basically F3 sine alpha and alpha is 53.13 degrees plus F3 sine 53.13 degrees K. This is our F3 force in terms of Cartesian vector form. So, so far we have resolved three forces in terms of Cartesian vector form. Now we have two more forces. So let us consider 600 Newton force as F4. It is directed in the positive sense of the x-axis. So it would be 600 I plus 0 J plus 0 K. Similarly for F5 force which is directed in the negative sense of the z-axis so it would be 0i plus 0j minus 900k now let us consider them this is a this is b this is c this is d and this is e now we have resolved all the forces in terms of Cartesian vector form. So now we could apply the equations of the equilibrium. So we have first equation of equilibrium, which is sum of the forces. And x direction is equal to 0. So F1 has no component in the x direction f2 has one component so it could be written as negative f2 and then this component reduces to 0.36 f3 and then we have 600 and again f5 has no component in the x direction so it could be 0 equals to 0. So from here this would be our first equation. Then we have another equation which is sum of the forces in y direction is equals to 0. We have this component of F1 force in the y direction. It would be written as 0.8 F1 Then we have no component in the y direction of F2 force. Then this component reduces to 0.48 F3. And then this force has no component in the y direction. Also, this force has no component in the y direction. So this one becomes equals to 0. This would be our second equation. We have another equation of the equilibrium which is sum of the forces in that direction is equals to 0. Then we have Z component of F1 force. This simplifies to 0.6 F1 carry F2 has no component in the Z direction F3 has one component in the Z direction so 
this simplifies to plus 0 0.8 app 3 and app 4 has no component in the z direction but f5 has and that is negative 900 equals to 0 so this becomes equation 3 so now we have three equations and three unknowns so we can simultaneously solve them now consider equation 2 so from equation 2 I can make the f1 as a subject so f1 is equals to 0 0.48 f3 divided by 0 0.8 so f1 is equals to 0 0.6 f3 Let's call this equation 4. Now put equation 4 in 3. So equation 3 becomes zero point six into zero point six F three plus 0 0.8 F3 minus 900 is equals to 0 so from here F3 is equals to 775.9 newtons and this is our first answer Now put the value of F3 in equation 4 in this equation basically. So from here F1 is equals to 0 0.6 into F3 which is 775.9 newtons. So F1 is equals to 465.5 one newtons. Now this is our second answer. Now we have to find the F2 force. We can consider equation 1. So put F3 is equals to 775. 0.9 newtons in equation 1 in this equation so equation 1 becomes negative half 2 plus 0 0.36 nine plus 600 is equals to 0 so from here f2 is equals to 879.32 newtons so this is our third answer so this is it for this problem I hope you will find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. And if you have any question or any doubt about this problem, then you can ask it in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.